Good evening. I am Dr. Jaime Rodriguez, Vice President of the West Seco ISD Board of Trustees. This board workshop is being conducted in compliance with the Texas Open Meetings Act. Notice of this meeting has been posted online for at least 72 hours. The board is meeting by the use of Google Meets and telephone transmission, which allows two-way communication for members of the public during public comments. A recording of this meeting is being made and will be available to the public at a later date. The time is now 7.43 p.m. And I call this meeting to order. I will now begin the roll call. Mr. Isidoro Nieto. Present. Mrs. Jackie Sustaita. Present. Mr. Jesse Trevino. Present. Mr. Mark de los Santos. Present. Mr. Andrew Gonzalez. Andrew, are you on? Let the record show that a quorum of board members are in attendance, although a quorum is not required for board workshops. And we will go on to item three, public comments. There are none. There are none. And item four, presentation by superintendent search firms, Dr. Valdez. Good evening, Vice President Dr. Rodriguez, trustees and members of the audience this evening uh, it's time to search for our next superintendent of schools for wesco isd and we have six firms uh, that will be presenting this evening i will now turn it over to mr andres sanchez dr valdez dr rodriguez members of the board we have six firms that will be presenting today four of the firms will be presenting in person in two virtual and the first company to present is JG Consulting, and Mr. Garcia will let me. <clears throat> and we told him that they have 10 minutes to make the presentation and five minutes for questions and answers.
good evening. Thanks for your patience and indulging us while we get the technology figured out. Uh, my name is James Guerra. I'm the president and CEO of JG Consulting. Uh, joining me this evening is one of my esteemed colleagues, Dr. Sylvia Hatton. Here in spirit with us is Dr. Art Cavazos and Dr. Steve Flores. They had other obligations, but uh, you may know of those two gentlemen. They have a pretty storied career serving as former superintendents here in the Rio Grande Valley. Um, and also, too, my family is originally from Roma, so I have roots in, in Starr County. I currently reside in Austin. Dr. Hatton uh, main, maintains two homes here and also lives in the Central Texas area. But want to thank you for the opportunity to sh uh, share a little bit more about us this evening. And first and foremost, thank you for your service to public education. It's a very critical time in public education, not just here in Texas, but nationwide. Um, and again, my name is James, so feel free to address me as James. Um, so in the spirit of time, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, if James, uh, let me just real quick, um, just Mr. Yes, Trevino here is, we'll be keeping the, the time for you. Okay. okay, so 10 minutes. 10 minutes, okay. and then we'll yeah, five we'll minute go, questions. We'll go through this quick. Thank you. At yes. nine minutes, I will, I will let you know when you're at nine minutes. Perfect, <clears throat> thank you, sir. Okay. All right, and hopefully it will load. Okay, thanks again for indulging us. Um, again, my name is James. Dr. Hatton's joining me, and in spirit, we have uh, other team members here. Uh, Dr. Cavazos, and not pictured as Dr. Flores. We have a team of 12 retired superintendents who support public education and superintendent searches specifically in the great state of Texas. We're the only national search firm based in Texas, so we have deep roots. We're currently supporting um, districts all around the country, as far east as Vermont and as far west as California. The only other superintendent search that we're currently um, supporting in Texas is Socorro ISD and Region 19 in El Paso. So we're very intentional with our work and the districts that we serve. So our mission is very simple. We operate by three pillars uh, of which you can see here in our mission statement. Inclusivity, transparency, and equity. Um, and I'm going to get more into those three statements as we discuss our scope of work. The, su the success of a superintendent can be measured in many ways. However, the ultimate measure of success is student performance, student outcomes, what he or she as students do, whether they pursue a, a, college, a college education, they go on to career, um, uh, working in life, military, etc. cetera. Um, so our litmus test is to recruit talent that are committed for the long term. If you look at our track record of success, the superintendents that we've recruited are still serving in their current role today. few uh, of our mo more recent uh, superintendent searches. Uh, we most recently conducted the superintendent searches on behalf of the Houston Independent School District, 
my hometown in Austin, Austin ISD, Lamar Consolidated, and a number of others around the country. I mentioned that we're a national firm. Uh, we have 35 faculty members, which are essentially the brain trust, the retired superintendents, located in all major metropolitans around the United States. Um, so some of these um, school districts you see before you, and last but not least coming soon, the West Laco Independent School District. Some of the differentiating factors that we're going to discuss this evening with you, of course, the brain trust that I refer to often. Um, it's the experienced practitioners, those that who have served as superintendents. And so I mentioned we have 12 retired superintendents that live and work on behalf of the firm in Texas. So granted, you will have four of us serving as boots on the ground here in the community, working with your constituents, the students, the staff, uh, all, of, all of the stakeholders. Thank you. All of the stakeholders uh, that will provide you with input and feedback as we develop the leadership profile, which essentially is the job description. So we will solicit input and feedback to create the leadership profile, which will serve as a North Star. That will be your rubric for how we as a firm and how you as a board will work with us and vice versa, our collaborative work together in recruiting talent. What I often say is that we work at the will of the board. We do not have a stable of candidates. We're not recycling candidates from one district to another. In fact, in our contract, we guarantee that we'll never recruit your superintendent away from the school district. So that's critically important. Um, second, that you see here in the bullet, we utilize an on-demand interview portal. It's a pre-school screening tool that enables you as a board in closed session to get to know the candidates before we bring them in on planes, trains, and automobiles. So it's not enough these days to just have an artifact, a letter of interest, a resume that we'll provide you with. You're actually going to get to see the candidates in a video screening uh, mechanism where you can see their demeanor, the way they dress, the responses to basic questions. Now, this video doesn't replace the in-person interviews. This is just a tool so that you get to know the candidates a little bit better and also for us as a firm to get to know them better as well. And we are the first firm to ever implement this technology. Due to COVID, um, some of the other firms have adopted the same practice. And I guess like the old adage goes, the best form of flattery is imitation. So uh, I'm very proud of the fact that we're the first group to do this. I mentioned the guaranteed success. We have a guarantee of a two-year commitment, which, knock on wood, we far exceeded that with our previous placements. Should the superintendent serve less than two years, we will conduct the search in its entirety at no cost to the district. So this is a screenshot of what the on-demand interview portal looks like. This is the, uh, the, the new superintendent of the Houston Independent School District, Mr. Millard House. All of the candidates were asked the same four questions in this, in this practicum, if you will. So what drew you to the position of Houston ISD in this example? Um, and so he responded using his own device. You can use a laptop, desktop, tablet, even a mobile phone works. And then they can re-record re their answers and then we provide you with access to the videos. So we're not withholding any information from the board. Again, the will of the board, this is your decision to make. We will make recommendations based on best practices, but we'll ultimately leave the decision to you. So it's entirely in your hands, but we're not gonna withhold any information. We'll bring all of the um, information, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, including the background reports. We outsource to Baker Eubanks, their sole purpose in life is to conduct thorough background checks. We just completed an executive search in San Diego County, California for a superintendent. This firm was able to produce their thorough background check within a week. And that's checking all the government municipalities, city, city courthouses, et cetera. Now I'm gonna play a short video for you because I think this resonates here in the Valley. Uh, Let's see if I can get back to it. All right, and this video is a test of recent testimonial. Um, JG Consulting is Dr. a Gonzalez. powerhouse. They put you in a position to compete at very high levels. Mm -hmm. And I've been a superintendent now going on my sixth year, and I still have a very strong relationship with the firm. So it's, it's a long-term family-type environment with JG Consulting. 
My name is Dr. J.A. Gonzalez, and I'm superintendent of schools for McAllen ISD. We're a high-performing school district. We have approximately 21,000 students in our district, two-time A-rated. We earned the post-secondary readiness distinction, and we also earned the financial integrity rating system of Texas. We have multiple blue ribbon schools, so very proud of the community and the staff, and uh, we're excited about the future in McAllen ISD. If you look at the number of superintendent positions that are available in the great state of Texas or across the nation, they're extremely limited. So you're getting into a very, very highly competitive environment. So my experience in working with the firm was one in which I felt like I was important and I felt like I can ask any question that I wanted to and all my, my questions were important to them. So that was good to know. And when I went into the process, I knew that it was going to be a process that was well thought out. Uh, if you look at the individuals that work for JG, there's a lot of practitioners, so they truly understand the intricacies of the education process because they've been in the game. So that makes it one in which when you're an educator and you're applying for a superintendency, you want to work for a district that, that you fit with, and this firm's going to make sure that they're going to put you in a position to get you there. So that's Dr. Gonzalez. So naturally, we conducted the superintendent search on behalf of the McAllen ISD. Also here in, in, in the Valley, um, prior to the, the recent search in Donna, Dr. A, uh, we recruited and supported the Donna ISD superintendent search before he took promotion um, in Round Rock. And then also San Benito CISD with Dr. Carmen. So what we'll do, based again on the will of the board, we can cast a wide net. So whether you want to recruit locally here across Texas or nationwide, we'll follow the directive of the board. So we'll ask you independently and as a team, what are your aspirations for this particular search? So we work within the context of all um, leadership across the United States. So if you give us that charge, we'll cast a very wide net. Some of the strong partnerships that we have include uh, the American Association of School Administrators, of course, the state affiliates, which here locally is TASA TASB, ALAS, the Association of Latino Administrators and Superintendents. Several of our faculty members are the founders of that, or some of the founders of ALAS. Um, in fact, our, our uh, esteemed colleague in Phoenix is the former uh, Superintendent's Leadership Academy Director. Uh, we also work closely with the Council of Great City Schools, CUBE, MASBA, uh, which we recently attended a few weeks ago in San Antonio, uh, NAPSI, NALEO, NSBA, and so forth. Our timeline that you see before you is, is merely sub, uh, a proposed timeline, so it's not set in stone. The general uh, rule of thumb for a superintendent search can last anywhere from four to six months. But what we like to do when we begin uh, the, the planning phase, we'll work backwards from the, the date that you wish to name a loan finalist. So all of the major milestones that you see before you, we'll, we'll have an exercise, a workshop together where we identify a calendar that is conducive to meet your schedule. And the candidates will work around your schedule. So the benefit of this is we'll plan far, far in advance and we also have the holidays quickly approaching, which gives us a recruitment time frame that is very feasible. So that way the incoming superintendent can transition during the holidays and really hit the ground running hard after the new year. So it's a prime time to begin the recruitment. A few testimonials that I wanted to share and, and also I'll add that many of the testimonials that you can find um, can be found on our website, jgconsulting.us. So you can read um, written testimonials such as this, watch videos such as the one I just played and other sir, videos. you have one minute? I'm sorry? You have one minute. Okay, thanks, sir. I'm nearly finished. So Jacinto Ramos Jr., who many of you probably know in Fort Worth, Alicia Reyna, former trustee, and Donna had some very um, kind and gracious things to say about the team. And I'll close with this. We utilize a lot of technology, as you can see, to benefit you as a board when um, identifying your, your next district leader. Um, so this is a screenshot of my professional LinkedIn profile. I wanted to give you a sense of the type of reach that we had. Uh, so upon the invitation um, to be here this evening, I quickly said thank you to the district. And again, thank you for your service, but I wanted to show you um, how quickly we received so many hits. So 48 likes, almost 1,300 hits in a matter of a week. Um, and these, some of the folks pictured there are practitioners like Dr. Hatton and others on the team all around the country. So our reach is very broad. Um, so I just want to leave you with that and again say thank you. And at this time, if you have any questions, be 
happy to answer those questions. Thank you. We'll start, uh, Mr. Nieto. Uh, yes. Yeah, I think you answered part of this question here. How will your firm search for a superintendent that will meet the needs of uh, Wessico? You mentioned that you would uh, talk to the board or a superintendent and see what we needed. Uh, but what criteria will you use to entice a qualified person to apply for the position of WISD superintendent? Great question. I appreciate that. And so our strength um, is actually in our ability to recruit. We're not relying on advertising or just casting that net that I so eloquently put or attempt to, um, but we'll rely on our networks to recruit talent that align to the job profile, which is the leadership profile. I often call it the North Star. So when we learn from each of you what you're looking for, what your hopes and aspirations are for the Westaco Independent School District, we're gonna ask you a series of 10 questions. One of those questions is simply, what are the characteristics, traits, and qualities you're looking for in the next superintendent? That same question will be posed in a survey to your community, both in English and Spanish. We'll conduct town hall meetings here um, in person if, if allowed. Due to the restrictions of COVID, I'm not sure what your policies are. But what we often do is to do a combination of in-person meetings, Zoom meetings, telephonic meetings. Our best work is naturally done in person. That's our preference. But again, at the will of the board, if you give us the, uh, the opportunity to engage with your, your constituents, the staff, and the students also is critically important. We want to hear from the students. What do the students want to see in the next superintendent? So when we create a summary report, we're gonna synthesize all these various things that we hear and present it to you. And that's gonna give you direction on what everyone is saying about what they'd like to see in the next superintendent. And that's gonna help us create the draft of the leadership profile. Thank you. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Hi, good evening. You just answered my question. I was going to ask how you involve the community and the students into this process because I know I've read you know how search firms work, and a mm -hmm. lot of them, yes, it focuses on the board, but involves all the other stakeholders as well. So you said town hall meetings. Um, what other ways do you in engage with the community yes. and staff? And so uh, for those communities that don't have access to the Internet, obviously it's critically important that we go to them. We make ourselves available. So we'll spend weeks at a time here in person if it's allowed. Um, to engage with, with different families. Uh, I mentioned San Diego. We were working in San Diego, California in the last couple of weeks. We had 18 town hall meetings. So we hosted town hall meetings at each campus. Uh, they're, they're comparable in size in terms of ADA and student enrollment here. So what we did is we, we conducted two town hall meetings at each campus each weeknight, so during the off hours, to accommodate work schedules, to accommodate the teacher schedules. And then we also had Zoom meetings going simultaneously throughout the day. And to give you some context, I'd mention Austin ISD and their search. Granted, we did this at the beginning of the pandemic, so everything was done virtually, but we held over 200 Zoom meetings over the course of one month to, to garner input from the community. So we had five consultants assigned for that particular search. We'll have four assigned here, plus all, all of our back office support. So we have full-time staff. That's the other unique feature about our group. It's not all part-time. Um, so you have the benefit of getting all these resources to help in concert. Great, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Dravidi? <clears throat> Mr. Guerra, how many, if we were to, to select you guys, how many other, how many other search, searches would you have going on at the time? or do you space them out or are you going to dedicate the full time to us? Yeah, so we're very intentional. I appreciate that question. So if, if you're familiar with this um, current, um, I guess, status of the state of Texas for, for uh, I guess, this discussion tonight, there are some, at least 40 superintendent vacancies across the state. Right now, we've only um, chosen to um, pursue one, which is the Socorro Independent School District. So we only, only have one other search in the state of Texas. And they're a little bit further ahead because they retained our services a few weeks ago. Um, but we have different teammates assigned to different searches. So that way there's no overlap and you have our undivided attention in terms of the quality of work, what we are seeking to do by serving this community. Um, so the overlap is, is non-existent. And again, because of our bandwidth here, um, we have tr tremendous support uh, across the state and full-time staff. So not to worry, we've, at one point in our peak last spring, we had uh, 72 elected official partners that we were working with simultaneously. 
So, and we accomplished our goals in, in every single search. Okay. And one more question. Will, will the price change if we asked you to expand to a nationwide search? No, sir. So the cost that you see in our proposal is all inclusive. That includes all of the advertising, the on-demand interview that I, I showed, our travel and expenses, um, all of the above. So it's, there are no hidden fees. You won't find any other additional cost um, coming after we're done. So it's all inclusive. It's one set rate. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Mr. De Los Santos? I had a few questions. <clears throat> You've already talked about the stakeholder. One of the questions was the stakeholder. You described that and, and who you involve in the process that you do. You also talked about the placement time. You kind of showed us a timeline for our situation. Um, and you talked about, you, you touched on this a little bit with the video that, that you all provide of the applicants and the four questions. Is there any other type of deliverables that, yes, sir. that you all provide? Yes, sir. So the summary report, the feedback that we solicit from the stakeholder meetings, that's a, a deliverable, so that's the first major milestone. Um, we also, during executive session, when we present the videos, each of you will receive an iPad. On the iPad, all of the artifacts from the, the applicants will be uploaded. We utilize a premium version of Dropbox. So when applicants apply, they apply through our server. We transfer everything to Dropbox so that the consultants and everybody have a one-stop shop to view everything. So when, when you see the information, we'll provide you with a tablet so you can take notes and then a, a, your own individual iPad, so everything's digitized. So we require five components per application. And, and candidates will naturally provide more, but the minimum requirements, letter of interest, resume and or Vita, academic transcripts, references, and um, a verification form. The verification form is an initialized um, agreement that states that you know there's no improprieties with regard to employment history you know it's so standard boxes that we as HR policy we ask and so they'll provide us with the document and a signed copy of that and then most candidates now because of the competitive nature I mentioned there are 40 vacancies just in Texas alone um, they're now providing 90-day entry plan some other sort of artifact for the board to consider. So all of that information will be uploaded to your own individual iPad, and then you'll also have the on-demand interviews. And then the background reports will be furnished to you once you select your top two or three finalists, and we'll pay, we'll pay for that as well. So we outsource it. It's $750 in full disclosure for a candidate, but we also want to protect our reputation as well. So it's important for us. So if there's anything that we need to uncover, we know so that way we're bringing it to you and you're making an informed decision so all of those items you'll have access to yeah. and again in the spirit of transparency we do not withhold any information um my next question i'm going to merge two that i had and i think you kind of described a little bit about this uh, who will be working on the search as far as our area like who would be our point of contact could you could describe that sure so i'll serve as the principal consultant so i am the the founder of the group i have the longest tenure in terms of supporting school boards and school districts nationwide um, so i'll serve as a principal consultant dr hatton who's joined me here this evening lives here locally um, dr cavazos also has a home here in the area and then uh, dr flores and then our back office our chief of staff Lizzie Carroll, she lives in Austin near me. She'll be back end support, but the four of us, myself, Dr. Hatton, Dr. Cavazos, and Dr. Flores will be boots on the ground here locally. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Andrew, are you logged on? Do you have any questions? I, I, my only question, thank you, uh, Doctor. Uh, my only question was actually answered by Mr. Trevino as far as how many other school districts uh, would they be servicing at the same time with all the openings? But he's answered that. I appreciate it, Mr. Getter. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. And and my question, you've answered my questions already. So okay. thank you, thank you very much for the presentation. Thank you again. Thank you, um, trustees, and again, thank you for your service to public education. Keep doing what you're doing, and best of luck in this pursuit. It's thank a tall you. endeavor, but you'll do great. Thank you. Thank you Mr. All right, take care. Yeah. Dr. Rodriguez, I want to mention, I know we went 10 minutes at five, but at five minutes, we were barely entering into uh, with, uh, with, Mark. with Mark. So we went ahead and went nine minutes and 15. So that way 
we can give the rest. And I guess we'll just you know, we'll go through. Leave it open to, you know. we can go longer in the question. You know? If they answer no. our questions. Five, five, five we'll minutes. just go through. Okay. Five minutes, I don't think. Yeah, we're no, we'll just at least go through at least through each board member and, okay. and have them ask questions. question. I think that'll, that'll be fair, and right? And if they okay. answer yeah. our question when they're doing their presentation, then, then we'll say yeah. that's right. Thank you. Correct. This one's going to be virtual. Right, first of all. Yeah. Next one is virtual, Carlos. The next one. Yeah. What's the next one? Oh, it's on this one. It says, it says here virtual. Dr. Duncan, it's your turn. Yes. yes, sir. Thank you so much. Hello. Thank you for letting me join you virtually. Um, hello from Arkansas. Congratulations on your 100 year anniversary. That's a huge feat. And you have some great promos that are out there. I've been able to watch some of your FFA videos. I've been watching what's happening in some classrooms, which as a former science teacher, and uh, superintendent, that's always exciting to see. So uh, my name is uh, Dr. Megan Duncan. I am with McPherson and Jacobson, and I don't have a fancy presentation for you. Um, you are embarking in the hardest decision that you're about to make in finding a superintendent. And so I don't envy where you are, but having been a superintendent and knowing what to look for, I do think that we at McPherson and Jacobson can help you find the right solution to find the right person. Um, and that is what my encouragement would be as you go through this process is to um, listen to people, see who you feel like you have a good connection with and and that will bring you the cream of the crop because that's what you really need. Uh, you've got a, a, another hundred years ahead and you want those to be just as successful as your, as your previous 100. So um, you have a packet and that was shared with you. Hopefully you've been able to look at that. It's really short, it's like 58 pages long. Um, but what you'll see on page eight is, is kind of a summary of what the process is that McPherson and Jacobson does. We are a nationwide search firm. We do searches across the United States and have a very um, good success rate, which is what we want. Um, the average lifespan of the superintendent, unfortunately, uh, pandemic or not, is not very long. And so you want someone who's going to come and stay and, and become part of your community if they aren't already. So on page eight, what it outlines is the five phase process that we have at McPherson and Jacobson, which phase one talks about how we establish those characteristics of the new superintendent, meaning what do you want in a superintendent? If you were gonna go out and like cherry pick and dream big and find the right person, who are they? What should we be looking for? and then establishing that timeline we want someone to be able to start by x so that there's some kind of exchange time frame or not and then determining where you would like to see advertisements um, nationally locally you know statewide those kind of things that's really what encompasses part of phase one phase two then moves into stakeholder input meeting and by that we talk to the most important people in your district which are students we want to know from kids, what do kids want to see in a superintendent? We want to know from your classified staff members, what would they like to see in a superintendent? From your teachers, uh, from your community, uh, we want to know from all of those stakeholders, what do they think they see and what do they think they need? Um, sometimes the best recruiting tools that we get are from kids, uh, believe it or not. That's kind of our, um, 
uh, our group that really leads the way that really helps us to refine and define. But from those, we then develop application materials, advertising materials, and then you as a board are in, a, in the driver's seat from the very beginning all the way through the process. So bringing that information back to you and you making a final decision about this does work for me or no, this doesn't work for me. Phase three is about the evaluation and the reference checks. And how our, our team does that is we have a process that we call going three deep. So if you've ever applied for a job, chances are you don't list people who are gonna give you a poor reference. You're gonna list people that are gonna say really nice things about you and really great things about you. So we asked that person if they could give us names and numbers of three people that we might be able to call. And we call those three people. And we asked those three people if they could give us three names and numbers of people that we might be able to call to get some more information and so on. So that we get to the place where um, it's someone who is aware of this person, but they might be able to give us more information, things that you can't find on social media, things that you can't find online or in background checks that uh, may not crop up that you might need to know about as a board. Our goal from that phase three is then to develop interview questions with you and provide you with some options to say, these are some questions that you might consider. You guys then will uh, pick your, your, your selection of what you would like to ask. And then phase four is all about selecting the applicants. It's the hard part. We bring you the best of the best. Uh, you then determine who you would like to interview, um, maybe who you would not like to interview, and then interview the candidates. And the candidates meet with the stakeholder groups. So those four groups that we talked about, students, teachers, classified staff, and the community, and you as a board as a whole, um, meeting with those stakeholder groups, and then ultimately you selecting your superintendent. Uh, we have found in terms of longevity that phase five helps the new superintendent as they establish and also make sure that everyone is on the same page. Whatever your expectations are as a board, that that person knows what those expectations are so that they can deliver on them. So there are no surprises on either end. They know what you want, you know what they want, um, and, and everyone is on the same page to ensure their success. So, that's a summary of what the phase five, phase five process looks like. Um, our, we are very much a, a people-oriented type of, of group. Uh, we are practicing and we are practitioners ourselves. And so we understand uh, what needs to happen as a superintendent because we are superintendents. And I think that also makes a difference. We know exactly what to look for um, because we know what has been successful in our own careers. So if that's okay, I'll turn it over to you as board members. If you have any questions or if we want to look at any part of the packet that you have, uh, just let me know. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Duncan. I'll go ahead and open it up. Uh, Mr. Nieto? Uh, Dr. Duncan, you responded to the two questions that I had. Great. Thank you. Mrs. Sustaita? Hi, Dr. Duncan. Good evening. My question to you is, uh, your, lo your location is in Nebraska, so if you would help us, would you be doing this virtually or would you guys come in person? How would that work? I, I think it has to be a both approach. There will be times when we will have a touch point where we will just be having general conversations. There will be things that we'll do electronically, like selecting and looking at interview questions, but there are also going to be things that will be on site. Uh, when we meet with teachers, when we meet with your classified staff members, when we're meeting with students and community members, it's really hard to do virtually. It's more of a face-to-face -face experience um, and to let people feel comfortable enough to be able to say what they want to say. Some districts prefer virtual due to COVID. Um, we're also happy to do that if that's more comfortable for the district, whatever the district chooses. Uh, we've done it both ways, um, but sometimes the face-to-face, -face, really getting to know someone is much different than being uh, virtually present. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank Mr. you. Mr. Trevino. Hello, Doctor. Good evening. Hi. My question is, if selected, how many additional searches would you have going on during our time frame while you helped us look for, an, for a superintendent? Great question. Hopefully you ask everyone that. That's a great question. Uh, our, our searches 
do are, are varied, but we also have a lot of consultants that are part of McPherson and Jacobson. So the consultants that would be assigned to your district would be just devoted to the one search of your school district. It's very hard, um, in my opinion, having done previous superintendent searches, um, you've got to be really focused and you've got to be very intentional and you've got to be very consistent. And that's more difficult to do when you're when you're managing multiple searches at the same time. Okay. And my second question, but I noticed the majority of your searches or the majority of your superintendents, my question was, was, is, will the price change if we extend the search nationwide? But I know, I noticed your company is already located in Nebraska, so this was, yes, I guess, sir. more directed to, to uh, somebody from Texas. Yes, sir. So we are a nationwide search firm. Uh, we do give the price up front, and I know that that's not always what you see, but we put it in print. We tell you what it is on the front end so you know exactly what you're getting, um, and, and you know what, it, what is included on the front end. Uh, so you, you, we both have a, a clear understanding before we start what the expectations are. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank yes, you. Ma Mr. De Los Santos. Um, <clears throat> you've answered a few of my questions. I just have, you've answered placement time that's in the packet and, uh, what, what type of deliverables are provided to the, to the school board? In terms of, and, of in terms of and job descriptions, evaluations, packets, um, maybe like, like a 30 day, 60 day, 90 day plans that they may submit. I mean, any type of, like, like what type of deliverables will we see as the search goes on? As the output. Okay. So we'll, we'll determine of course, what the interview questions are, which would be something that would be a tangible. Um, that you would practice with. But in terms of the applicants themselves, one of the things that we prefer to do is to do a pre-screen video. It lets you put a name with a face. It lets you hear some of their mannerisms, kind of how they walk, how they talk, what, what they're about before you bring them in. Some of these people may not be from Texas and it's advantageous for you to know before you ask them to fly in or before they drive over. Um, if you're even interested, sometimes you're gonna look at people and go, they will never fit in here. And that's not a bias, it's just the reality of they might or they might not. And so having that moment to see them ahead of time and do some pre-screening questions helps you to have a view and as a team, be able to look over the options that you have to decide if you want to bring someone in, in and actually extend them an interview. Uh, the interview process is, uh, we go through the process of obviously doing all of the checks ahead of time. We also, before you hire a candidate, we do background checks. Uh, that's just a standard practice that we have in place just to make sure that if there's anything that for some reason hasn't been mentioned or shared, uh, that you know about that in advance. And that's something else that we do in terms of asking those questions. Um, you as a school board don't always have that luxury, but we as a search firm have the ability to say, is there anything that we should know about or that the board should know about that could be embarrassing to them or to students? And that would be really good for you to know before you get to that point. Now, if you choose after that to go ahead and interview them, of course, you know, that would be up to you. Okay. <clears throat> My next question, I know that uh, Trustee Trevino kind of talked about this, and you have a consultant that's listed here uh, for Texas, um, but what is, can you describe a little bit more? What is it going to look like as far as who's going to be working on the search? And there's two, it's a two-part, who, who's going to, the experience of maybe some of the recruiters or consultants you may be reaching out to, and would there be like a point of contact that's assigned to, to the district? Yes, you'll have two points of contact for the district. You will also have a partnership that we try to place a point of contact within the district, someone that the board trusts, someone that the board would like us to talk with in terms of just organizational on the front end. One thing that we want to do is make this process as easy for you as possible. I would guess that most of you probably have lives outside of that boardroom. And so we want to make sure that we try to, to organize things for you ahead of time. We have things already typed. We, we have everything ready to go so that all you have to do is then give your opinion or, or feedback on that particular item that we're working in as we move through the phases. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Gonzalez, any questions? No, not at this time. You've answered my questions, Dr. Duncan. I appreciate your time. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. And you've answered my questions already, Dr. Duncan. Thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you, you so Duncan. much. Thank you. Thank time. you. All right. Is that, are we good? 
We're good. We're good. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Good evening. Thank you. Have a great Have day. Have a good evening. You too. Is that on Andrew's end or is that here? Uh, Mr. Gonzalez, you can't hear him. What's that? Can you hear me? Andrew, are you, is your mic check? Can you, can you uh, talk a little bit, Andrew? Can we can barely me? hear you. Yes. That's still too low. It's, it's not here. It's, 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 right. it's on. Okay. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay. It's real light. Oh, okay. I don't want to yell, but I'll yell. That's okay. <laughs> hello. Hello, hello. Welcome. So where's the hot senior? Right there. Take your pick. Take your pick. Oh, okay. So before you all start, I'm going to let you know it's going to be a 10-minute presentation. Thank and you. Uh, Mr. Trevino will keep, keep time, okay? Awesome. He'll start it once you all start the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is it okay if I take off my mask? Yes. Wonderful. That works. All right. So, are we good? We're good. You all can right. start whenever you're ready. Well, thank you all so much, and uh, good evening to everyone. It's an absolute pleasure and an honor to be here uh, before you all, getting the opportunity to present and talk a little bit about who we are, what we can do for you, and uh, what we do for superintendent search services. So without further ado, I'll talk a little bit about what you're going to see today. My goal here is to tell you who we are, um, again, what our services are, who some of our previous clients have been, what our team looks like, what our objectives are, but I also want you to see a little bit about the work that you're going to see from us. What does our application look like? How do our timelines look like? How do our processes look like, right? And more importantly, how our options and our menu of abilities can work for your school district here in Westlake OISD. One of the huge things about us is that we don't bring you a sort of cookie cutter approach and say this is how we do it everywhere. We really do take the time to learn the district, learn the culture of the district, learn the culture of the community, and more importantly, apply the goals and expectations of the board to the process that we're doing. Because at the end of the day, this is the most intimate process you have as a board. It's one of the very few, very detailed uh, jobs you have uh, by the education code. And so we take it <laughs> seriously in terms of what you're doing. So I want to talk about a little bit about that. And so who are we? Uh, we are a Texas-based law firm. Uh, we practice all over the state of Texas. We have four offices in North Texas, Austin, San Antonio, and here in the Rio Grande Valley. We are home base. And we practice all areas of the law with school and education. However, we do more than that. So we also provide legislative services, consultant services, and specifically superintendent search services. Our firm is one of the few law firms in the state that we carry a yearly round working uh, search firm practice. So it isn't something we do just because we saw, we saw an opportunity. It isn't something we do just because the client asks for it. We genuinely work on this all year, doing about four to five searches a year throughout the school year. So we maintain an active superintendent search docket as we're working. And the beautiful thing about us is that our team and our experience really has all sort of backgrounds. We have former board members, retired superintendents, and we even have parents who are currently with their children in public schools. We think that's it's important because we do take pride in representing public schools specifically. So our services, what do we do? We're, we do everything. We do everything from developing your candidate profile all the way to signing on your superintendent and everything in between that. We work with adopting and creating timelines, job postings, staff surveys, community surveys, weekly board updates, um, 
town halls, setting up interviews, vetting your candidates, doing background checks, organizing town halls. We even conduct salary studies to show you what the market looks like, where you need to be at to make sure you recruit the best candidate possible. And we also even work with you if you'd like to negotiate the contract to make sure that you have a one-stop shop with us. The moment you bring our team on board to help you, we do everything from the moment we create the profile to turning in the contract to the board president when we're done and fully executed, should you choose to do that. Now, should you choose that you only want us up to a certain degree and you want your uh, counsel to do something else? Absolutely. We're here to work around your processes and around your systems. So who have we represented? We've worked with m many uh, clients in the past. Uh, specifically here, you can see some of our, mo our most recent ones. We worked as far up as Lancaster ISD, as far west as Pecos Bar, Sotoya, as far south as La Villa, Far San Juan, La Jolla, Hidalgo. And like I mentioned, we really do uh, maintain an active docket, so we're averaging a little over four uh, superintendent searches a year. One of the beautiful things with us, with, with what we do, is that we really work really well with the clients. And so our search is a national search. We work with candidates that come across the entire country. And we have school districts, for example, just north of you here in Edcouch, who brought in a candidate from Connecticut. Then we have a local another school district who chose an in-house candidate in La Jolla. And then we have another school district who chose a state candidate from Houston. And then we had another school district who chose their interim to come in. So when we say we work with the board and what the board desires are, we have the ability to have a national reach. But at the end of the day, we're able to work with you specifically to what your needs are here in your school district. And so our team, like I said, we have Mr. Benjamin Castillo right here. He is a partner in our law firm. Uh, he lives here in Westlaco, and his kids are going to be coming here to Westlaco. They're about three years old, the oldest one, Amelia. And so he'll be here. He works actively with school districts across the state. He's also been a former board member. So he's been through the process both on your end and on this end. We also have Dr. Daniel King here with us also, bringing a wealth of experience. He, of course, you know him from PSJA, uh, known across the country, uh, from Washington down to where we're at, for all his work that he's done. He helps bring a certain level of reputation and credibility to the search that we do, because he has those contacts nationwide to work with a lot of what we do. Myself, Eden Ramirez, I work with the, with the firm. I am a full-time lawyer, but I took a lot of interest in the superintendent search process when I became on board, and I've worked on the last two years of superintendent searches. And we also have on our team Dr. Abelardo Saavedra, uh, the first Hispanic superintendent of one of the top, uh, top population districts in the country. They're in Houston. So he also works with us. And so not only do you have us from the firm, but you have the wealth of our consultants who work with us every single step of the way and assist us in every single process. So our objectives, right? This is uh, very important. What are your expectations of the board? That's where we start in, right? Our first goal is to sit down with you and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation of what it is you're looking for in your search. Now, there's two things, right? It's what are you looking for in a superintendent, which is, of course, a conversation we're all going to have, but also what are you looking for in your search? Because, you see, the search process itself, it's its own mechanism. It's its own structure. It's its own process. And we want to make sure that you feel comfortable with the process in searching your superintendent as it is who you end up with at the end of the day. So we take time to do that. We want to work with you to adopt a timeline that fits your school district and your needs. We want to make sure that uh, to the extent that you want, involve your stakeholders, whether it's employees, community, students. We work with all of that. We help organize everything from your town halls. We run the town halls. We run your surveys. We work with a lot of those things. And again, we also create the salary studies for you so you know exactly how the market looks like and where your candidates are coming from. Um, our application, we think this is very important. And I want to talk about what we look for because I want you to know also what you're going to expect. In the applications, we ask for all this information on here contact information, education, employment history, current salary, legal questionnaires, legal uh, language skills, right? Letters of interest, resumes, secondary transcripts, copy of certifications, letters of reference, statement of philosophy. We want to make sure that when you pick up one of our applications, you know exactly who the candidate is, and most of your questions are answered right then and there. Now, one of the things we take a lot of pride in is our confidentiality. 
We have candidates who feel very comfortable applying with us, who in fact have told us we only apply when we know it's one of your, your firm doing the search. Because we trust that our information is confidential, we trust that the process isn't going to leak, that we're not going to get in trouble out from our current employers or anything. And so we take a lot of time and a lot of pride being confidential with it. Not just on their end, but also on your end. We want to make sure that this is, at the end of the day, your process. We're not interfering with it, and that you can rest assured that our confidentiality really does extend to all of you here to make sure that this is the top-notch process in finding your superintendent. And a timeline, right? What does a timeline look like? This is just a very rough sample timeline. I've not spoken with any of you, so I don't know what your process and your expectations are. But this is just to give you context in terms of what you're looking for, right? We need a board meeting to adopt the application, the timeline. We have an application period. We have a review period. We have a special meeting to select the candidates. We have interviews. We have the 21-day waiting period, naming of the loan finalists, the superintendent start date. We have a lot of stuff happening, right? In addition to surveys that are happening, town halls that are happening. So I bring you this mainly just so you can see that there's a lot of that goes into this process, Sorry, right? Sorry, we have one minute? Yes, sir, thank you. That a lot goes into this process, and this is sort of what it looks like. So again, I spoke a little bit about employee surveys already and community surveys. We do these in both English and Spanish, online and paper, and we present the data to the board, and the board has that data co uh, under confidentiality. In our town halls, because of, because of COVID, we experienced a lot of Zoom town halls because we did searches during Zoom also, but we also did some uh, without uh, in, in person. So we can modify how you want, in person, Zoom, hybrid, or no town hall at all. It's up to you. This is just one of the menu options that we provide to you in what we do. And of course, our interviews, right? We're a big proponent of two rounds of interviews. Make sure that you have a base interview where you can narrow down who you want, followed by a more extended interview that you're working with. And so this is just a little bit about the process of what we do and how our interviews look like. And we think that we, you can really benefit from this. But at the end of the day, we really do make this about you. Westlaco ISD Board of Trustees is who is hiring, not us. And this is your process at the end of the day. And on account of that, we take pride job, in sir. that. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much for Absolutely. that presentation. We're going to open it up for questions sure. now. Appreciate okay. it. Uh, Mr. Nieto? Um, yes, you, you answered the first part. But uh, the second part I have, what criteria will you use to entice a qualified person to apply for the position of what was as the superintendent? Yeah, so one of the things on how you entice them and the criteria you develop is after we speak with you, what is it you're looking for in that criteria? Do you want someone who's been a previous superintendent? Do you want someone with uh, assistant superintendent experience as a minimum qualification? The criteria we develop around what you are looking for, right? Doctorate degree, no doctorate degree. But that's sort of how that would work out. So that, that's part of our process. We come and we meet with you when we do the, when we uh, draft the application. We also draft a, a profile for the candidate based on y'all's feedback. Uh, and then once we get your feedback and we get everybody's consensus on what you're looking for, we put that on the advertisement, minimum qualifications. Uh, and then we set Dr. King and Dr. Saavedra out to go uh, recruit and they do a really good job at it. So Thank you. That's our process. My question to you is because you just mentioned how you talked to each one of us and we're all very different up here and there's very different types of tr leadership traits in, in superintendents. So what I am looking for might be different from what he's looking for, right? So how do you guys take every individual's uh, preference and put it together to find the candidate that meets all of our preferences? Well, I think that's where our skills of being school lawyers and going to board meetings every night comes into play. Uh, we work it out. I mean, at the end of the day, I, even though everybody's different, and Dr. King could help on this as well because he was a superintendent for many years. Uh, at the end of the day, you guys are going after the same goal. You want a good superintendent that's going to do good for your school district, right? It's just how we get there. Right. So, I mean, we've, we, we've, we've done this process enough where we're very, very confident that once we talk it out, that we're going to get to a profile that the board agrees on. Yeah, I think one of the keys to that a lot of times, uh, you know, sometimes it's framed differently, but first of all, looking for and building consensus to the extent possible with you. Second of all, in that initial working with you, it also helps to develop an understanding of the skills that the superintendent is going to come in needs because you need the right superintendent for where you are as West ISD right now. There's not like, uh, superintendents are not like plug and play. 
So you need a superintendent. Where are you right now? Where are you trying to head? Where are you as a board? And so, for example, if you need a superintendent that, that needs to really work hard on unity, well, then that's a key factor, you see? And it, if you've already got, like, you've got your direction, where, well, that's a different thing. And so where you are on everything from academics to where you are on leadership. And so finding a leader that also matches not only what you're looking for, but a leader that knows how to work with you as you are also. That's very important. So. Great. Thank you. My question is, I, I know you mentioned you have about four or five searches going on during, during, throughout a year. So my question would be, during our time frame, if you guys were selected, would we be the only ones or would you have additional searches going on as well? If we get selected as partner of the firm, I will direct all resources to this search. I can guarantee you that. Uh, you know, Mr. Ramirez mentioned I live here. My kids are going to be students here. So this is going to be a priority for me and for my law firm. So you guys don't have to worry about that. We, if we get it, we won't apply for any other searches during this time. Okay. Another question, Mr. Castillo. If we decided to extend our search nationwide, will there be an additional charge for that, or is it all covered under? It's all covered. I mean, the, the additional charge would just be posting and advertising uh, charges that, that, the, that we get charged for posting the vacancy on there. But as far as our services, uh, it's, it's all the same to us. Okay. Uh, Thank you, sir. Mr. De Los Santos. <clears throat> I had a couple questions, but you've already answered as far as placement time. You have a timeline in early in the packet. Um, I think you've already talked about some of the deliverables. Is there is there any, do you want to elaborate any more on that as far as the type of deliverables that we'll be receiving as far as like applications, packets, plans, anything that you all provide during the search? So process? as far as our process goes, again, we if we get selected, the first thing we do is we want to have a meeting with you all as a board. Uh, we want to see what your expectations are because this is your search. Uh, as, as Mr. Ramirez stated, I've, I've been on that side doing more superintendent searches than I'd like to admit. And so there were some things that some search firms did that I kind of got annoyed at as a trustee. And so we shy away from that. So I want to ensure that every board member is comfortable with the process, everybody's confident in the transparency, and everybody is comfortable that we're trying to get the best candidate for, or the best pool of candidates uh, for y'all to, to review. And so at the end of the day, you pick the, the person that fits in Westlaco ISD, like Dr. King said. But we come and we meet with you. Uh, we, we have drafts of applications, drafts of timelines, and we modify based on, on y'all's feedback, uh, including a profile, uh, candidate profile. So those are some of the deliverables that, that we prepare for y'all. And what I'll add to that as part of the deliverables, you get a weekly update every Friday evening from us where we're at exactly in the process, how many applicants you have, where we're at, what questions were coming in, what concerns were coming in. We email that every Friday. In addition to that, you get to see every application. We don't hide any of them. We don't keep any of them. Even if they don't meet your qualifications, we still show it to you because these are your applicants and you get to see everyone. And so what we do with technology and Zoom and the COVID, we've been able to develop an online system where we have a Dropbox that gets updated where you see all the information, everything's already uh, siphoned out for you. You see the candidate name, their application, candidate name, resume. So it's very easy and intuitive for you to work with. But more importantly, if that doesn't work for you, we also prepare physical binders and physical files for you and we'll bring them bring in those for you. And that's sort of the work that will go to day to day. And, then, and also to add to that on the physical binders, because we've done that before, but again, it's a super confidential process, right? Mm -hmm. So one of the benefits of us being local is y'all could come by our office and review the hard copies uh, whenever y'all want. We make our conference room available for y'all. Uh, so you could review, if you have any questions, one of us will be there or you could call us. Uh, again, we're very accessible. This is your process. and. Uh, as far as that Dropbox feature, it depends on the board. If the board is comfortable with having access to all the applications the entire time, we'll do it. Some board member, some boards aren't for whatever reason, but mm -hmm. uh, it, it's up to the board. We have that ability and we're comfortable doing that as long as everybody understands that the materials are confidential. <clears throat> My next question is, I know you, you already talked about this too because you, you said you're local, um, but just to kind of, just to, be detailed what is it what would it look like as far as who's going to be working on our, our search specifically a little bit more detail on, on the team that, that's going to be working with us and is it going to be the ones you listed here in the beginning okay yes perfect. 
Yes, Those sir. are the individuals. Yeah, and then and, presents better than me. So. And the direct point of contact would probably be you, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, Perfect. Sir. Those are all my questions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Gonzalez, any questions? No, they've answered my questions. Thank you for your time, gentlemen. Thank you. Yes, sir. And I have none either. Thank you so much for the presentation. Thank Appreciate awesome. it. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you all Thank for you. the opportunity. Have a good evening. Thank you, sir. Good evening, Dr. Olivares. Before you start, I'm gonna we're gonna have a it's gonna be a 10-minute presentation. Mr. Trevino here will keep the time for you as soon as you start presenting. Okay. Thank you very much. I have a handout, sir. If I might, uh, it's yes. what you have on the screen, but uh, I don't know if you all are gonna make a decision. That's about. Thank you. Okay, well, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, President Quinn and, and uh, esteemed board members, I want to thank you for the opportunity uh, to be here before you uh, to talk about the proposal that I submitted in response to your announcement uh, for the superintendent search for the West Laco Independent School District. Uh, I have the proposal which pretty much delineates uh, my, uh, my structure and process for carrying out the activity as a sole consultant. I'm not here with a company. I'm not here with a firm. I don't have any interest in uh, any further connections, uh, promoting any commercial products for anybody or whatever. I'm here because I, as you will see in my career, I'm into uh, pretty late into my career, 40 some years. Uh, I've been a superintendent, I've been a principal, I've been a teacher, I've been um, a deputy commissioner of education under three commissioners of education for 11 years. Uh, I did governance operations when I was there, that was one of the areas. And what you have in the statute now is uh, what I wrote when I was there that went into law. So I understand the total aspects of uh, governance operations school boards and the role of the superintendent. I studied it for the last 15 years. I directed a doctoral program for uh, superintendents. My students are all over the state. Uh, students in Dallas, superintendent. Uh, the one in Austin, Stephanie Avila. Uh, we just had Art Cavazos here in Hollingen. Had Rick Lopez, uh, who was my student when he was in Mission. And uh, now he's in Garland. Uh, uh, Art's brother, Marcelo, is also a student in the program. Uh, so we have them all over. I mean, I could go on and on. And uh, with all of those, I supervised over 75 research studies that focused strictly on the role of the superintendent and school boards. 
so uh, I come here with uh, a passion for doing what's right, what's important, and realizing what's at stake in terms of uh, the service we provide and the responsibility that you have as school board members in overseeing the total operations of school systems. Uh, my proposal has delineated all of those steps in terms of uh, what I would do. Uh, I did mention uh, the partnership with the school district where I would need some administrative support and I built it in there so that we would work together as a team. I've done a lot of superintendent searches before. I just saw one of my, my colleagues walk out of this room, I didn't know he was here, uh, George McShann. Uh, the last five superintendencies that I did, I did them with George. George and I worked together and uh, we won all of them. I, I stopped doing them because I was just too involved with the university, I could only do so much uh, with the searches. Uh, but uh, Roland Hernandez, not only is he one of my students, but he's superintendent in Corpus, done well, he's been there for eight years. The superintendent in Isleta ISD, brought him from California. Uh, George and I did search, and uh, he's still there, 14 years. Uh, we did uh, Judson, San Antonio ISD, my, my school district where I was superintendent for seven years. Uh, the superintendent that left, Pedro Martinez, we brought him in from Chicago. He's going back to Chicago now as the superintendent in Chicago. Uh, so George and I had a pretty good run. And uh, when we bumped into each other, I said, I'm doing this solo. I'm coming kind of back to get back into uh, the real world. You know, because I hadn't, I hadn't done a search in about six years. But I did the Donna ISD. I didn't propose, they came to me. And uh, it was an interesting search. Uh, so now, tonight, I think, or tomorrow, they have a, a superintendent that uh, we selected, Dr. soon to be doctor. I'm supervising her dissertation. Angela Dominguez, who came, she was a deputy superintendent in uh, Colorado Springs. And uh, she's starting her first day of the job tomorrow. Uh, that just to kind of give you a little bit of background of what I bring to the table and uh, the information that you have in the proposal is well charted out and I crafted it pretty much uh, with the way that I did it with Donna. Uh, like I said, uh, the team is myself, my cell phone, my computer, and you. That's the team. That's where we would be doing the process. Uh, I'm not here to sell anything more other than the pride and the interest that I have to promote high quality leadership, uh, which then transforms into high quality services for students and priority support systems for teachers because they are the real program. They are the only program in school systems. And the role of the superintendent is critical to all of those happenings. Uh, in your what you have there as a document and what I have over here is a uh, mock schedule. It's a work schedule of how we would carry this out. So if you look at those dates and if you look at the starting times and stage one, stage two, and stage three, uh, basically will carry us through that process. Let's see if I can make this work here. There's uh, stage one. Now obviously those dates are not there. We, you know, if I were to be your consultant, uh, we would have to sit down and work out the, uh, all of the particulars, including all the dates. And as some of you I know are kind of new to the school board role, and some of you are experienced board members. So there'll have to be a lot of give and take. And we all know that, uh, which is one of the things that I wanted to do at first year is to commend you for the fact that uh, you've taken on this uh, voluntary role, servitude to the community, and we know that uh, you don't get anything monetary or otherwise. Uh, so uh, I want to commend you on that. What this will do here in terms of the faces is, as I said, build the team. Uh, the dates that are there will get you into all of the procedures and the steps that uh, I would uh, lay out in conjunction with you and with uh, somebody else. It would be a representative from the board 
could be the board president, or it could be a small committee, or it could be also, I mentioned the role of the attorney here in the school district, uh, because he or she would be the one that has more neutrality in trying to keep the confidentiality that's involved when you're doing this kind of a resource, uh, human resource responsibility. Uh, so I have the role of the, of the attorney built in there to help out as the, a member of the liaison team, but would be fully vested in the administrative support of what's going on in the district. And from what I understand is the attorney that you have in place, uh, he doesn't have a firm for school law or anything like that. He's working with you precisely. It's my understanding. I, I just met him outside, as a matter of fact. Uh, so uh, that is, uh, this is my proposal. Uh, phase one, defining roles and responsibilities. And I've got dates charted out. One of the most important things that uh, you do, uh, besides, uh, well, everything that you do is very important, but uh, selecting the superintendent has got to be the most important decision that you make as a school board. Uh, so what, uh, uh, in going through that process, uh, we would uh, have to develop a leadership profile. You know, what is it that you're looking for a superintendent? And that gets me then into the next slide, uh, which very quickly, uh, what you see there is a framework of school district functions that represent total operations of school systems. If you look at those, they'll become very familiar with you. Uh, governance operations is key, and it's not a given. There's got to be a, a, a work structure set up just like what you have right now, uh, but you need a superintendent that will be able to work with any kind of work structure that's developed jointly between he or she and the school board so that you can carry out the role of uh, policy decision making and also the approval of everything that superintendent has responsibility for in terms of functions of school systems. So you have governance operations, you have finance and business management, you have educational facilities, maintenance and ongoing operations as well, plant services, funding for facilities, uh, which means, uh, as you all know, uh, going out and, and doing bond issues, management, the, managing the funds, and deciding the format how you're going to distribute or actually roll out your construction program if, or renovations that you may be involved in. So facilities is extremely important. I don't know where you are right now with that, but we will talk about that. I, I intend to interview each of you as board members for at least an hour so that you can give me what you think as we go through each of these functions, what you know in terms of the issues, the priorities, the needs that uh, you would like, that you think you have in your school district, that you can reflect on, and that you would like to have a superintendent have those kinds of skill sets. That might be a priority. Uh, I read a little bit about you, and you have some priorities. Doctor, uh, you have one minute. Pardon me? You have one minute left. One minute left? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, let me go through that. You, that's why I wanted to put this up and I gave you that because you can look at that later. Uh, this goes through the rest. Uh, phase two, the candidate recruitment and application submission activity. It has a very specific step-by-step -step process that delineates uh, what I would do and what you would do as, uh, with, through the liaison team and it charts it out. Uh, I, I imposed some uh, dates in there. I don't know what your mindset is it's when you want to have a new superintendent come in, but that is the date that we're shooting for. And there's a date in there that has uh, uh, the, the last day when uh, we would be receiving applications in the process. Uh, the interview and selection, uh, once uh, we'll have to establish a procedure, we're here in the boardroom in our work area. You would come in, review, evaluate proposals individually or the applications, and then Service. we have a process so that then we get together up. to evaluate them. So I'll stop there and uh, I'll have that. I'm open to any questions that you might have. Thank you, Dr. Oliveras. We'll go ahead and open it up for questions. Uh, Mr. Nieto? I have one question. Uh, what criteria will you use to entice a qualified person to apply for the position? of WISD superintendent. What type of what, what criteria will you, you Well, use? the criteria that uh, we would build together when we had that profile. When I interview you, now I can give you 
all of the criteria that I know that happens and so on and so forth. Obviously, we want superintendent that is student-centered. We want a superintendent that has good communication skills. We want a superintendent that can reach out relevantly, authentically to all of the stakeholders in the school system internally, the employees, uh, with the school board in particular, and then the uh, stakeholders out in the community. Uh, whether it be your business sectors, your religious uh, sectors out there, everything that everybody that has an interest, senior citizens who have an interest in their taxes, especially. So you want someone that is going to have uh, all of those abilities plus the knowledge and the base to be able to understand uh, all of the functions of the school system, whether it be transportation uh, and all of the systems that go in place to having a good transportation system. So it would be all based around those 10 functions, sir. Someone that uh, has experience, is qualified, and demonstrated success. Uh, in my uh, work with school districts, like in Donna, uh, I worked that board. I had over 30 highly qualified candidates, and they had to work and interview and take a look and screen and so forth. We went through the process, and uh, we developed the issues for criteria. It was, leadership is basically somebody has, who has the influence to, or the ability to influence the followership, and you want that. That's basically it. You want someone that can influence, that uh, has high values, systems, moral character, and that has knowledge and performance skills to be able to carry out the job. Thank you. Hi, good evening. Over here. Yes, Ms. Stata. Hello. Uh, my question to you is how do you involve the community, the staff, the students? How do you get feedback from them in order to, to decide what candidates best fit Westlaco? In order to get the input for the, the right, kind of superintendent? Right, from the stakeholders community? Uh, there's two ways, and it's built into the proposal. Uh, what uh, is normally done, and especially in larger school systems, is uh, you have meetings. You announce meetings, and uh, you have stakeholder groups and parents. You could have them in the high schools. Okay. And uh, we invite parents. It gets publicized. And there is a process, which I'm very familiar with, which actually done it many, many times. Uh, we spend uh, an hour, an hour and a half with however many people come up. And uh, we give them a form, we have discussions, we define the criteria uh, in terms of uh, what they would have an interest in. And then we collect the data, we go to another high school or we have as many meetings as possible that you all want to hit all of the geographical areas in the community. Uh, what my experience is that having been a superintendent and realizing the importance of that, that is a very important event that uh, can also happen, and I would say preferably, depending on the conditions. Uh, if you need to show to the community that you want them involved, then we got to do that. You want to do that, and it's going to be time consuming, and that changes a little bit of the scope of work that I've laid out for you. That doesn't mean that I can't do it, but the way that I, uh, that I developed it is that I would use the school board members through those interviews to develop the input. You are elected officials. You are geographically representing the community out there. And uh, you would be able to communicate that. When your new superintendent comes on board, if you're really going to do a good long range strategic plan, that you want to have the superintendent with board members to have these public meetings, which would serve as an introductory type of thing for the superintendent but also an opportunity to begin to hear from all the stakeholders about uh, what the needs of the school districts are. And believe me, you, that's a very, very important. Uh, I know some of you have been on the board for numbers of years, and uh, strategic planning is very important. Stakeholder involvement is very important. And uh, so that uh, may be a long way of explaining to that. So if you want to go that route, then you also might have, we put up on a web page, the opportunity for people to get on online and they respond to a survey. We do an analysis of responses and you let the community know that you've got their input and that's uh, building up to this process. Uh, I don't have that built in there as an elaborate thing, as I mentioned. Now I can do it. And in fact, I talked with George and George and I have done it and said, hey, if you want some help, I'll come and help you with that. I said, well, let me see where we go. We have the uh, 
if we want to do the, uh, the extended version where we go to all of the stakeholders, it's time consuming, it takes, uh, may take a couple of days, it all depends. And uh, you know, where are we going to do it and how extensive. Uh, you have sometimes uh, the Chamber of Commerce, uh, you have other special groups who want to have an opportunity and we have those meetings with them separately to get the input. Uh, the value in that is that it uh, establishes trust between you as a board and you're giving it importance and uh, you want them involved and uh, you're going to get a lot of stuff from them that you already know. But it is the action that you're out there and you're saying this is uh, what we believe in and we're going to keep you involved throughout the whole process. Uh, and it's, uh, it's worth the investment. Thank you. Mr. Trevino. Yes, doctor, I've asked the same question to everybody today. My question is, how many additional searches will you have going on during our search time frame that we would uh, utilize for us? Well, right now I don't have any other search because I haven't done a search uh, for other than Donna, which I did uh, over the last two and a half months. Okay. But I hadn't done a search for at least three or four years. Uh, I'm just starting again. I'm uh, leaving my administrative duties with the university. I'm facing out into a retirement, but I want to stay active. Yes. So uh, I don't have any others on my plate right now. Okay. I know others that are coming up, and uh, depending on what happens here and how much I can handle, then uh, I'll defend them. Obviously, uh, I'll commit my full time to getting the job done. And that's, uh, that'll be the priority. And uh, it may mean that I'm not going to get involved with any other searches because I believe in doing it by myself. Yes, yeah, sir. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Richard De Los Santos? Yes, I had a, <clears throat> a series of questions. You've already answered some of them. You talked about the stakeholders, how do you reach out in their role. Uh, you've talked, you had an example of the placement time as far as the timeline. Um, deliverables. What type of deliverables could we expect um, as far as the job descriptions, packets? Uh, well, what are some of the things you would request? What are some of the things that we'd be receiving maybe weekly or as, as the process goes on? That, well, the deliverables will be from me to you in giving you ongoing reports. Right. Uh, meeting through the liaison team, looking at your schedules, at what point in time we want to come together so I can let you know how the process is unfolding. I can give you a little interim reports, uh, or I can uh, come in and talk verbally at one of your... Once we get into this, you can have uh, executive session meetings where I can come in and say this is where we are. For example, early on in the process, I would say right now I've got about uh, 15 candidates. It could be two or three weeks down the line. Uh, realizing that, uh, let's say that we, we got, uh, like we did in Donna, over 30 candidates. And uh, at least 20 of them were highly qualified. Uh, if you're really looking for a superintendent, then you wanna, you're going to have to spend some time. And I'm going to give you a... Uh, a profile for each of the candidates. I'll review every candidate. I interview them. When I recruit them or they apply, I have long conversations with them. I check them out. I find out their experiences. Many of them, I frankly will try to discourage them because I don't think they have the criteria or meet the qualifications, although they have the, the licensure or the certificate. But I'll, I'll try to move them into something else that you might want to get more executive level experience. So it's time consuming in that respect. Uh, as far as deliverables, number one, and the most important is I'm gonna bring you the most highly qualified slate of candidates that you can find. And uh, I'll give you a good background statement, written statement on each of them. I will also ask them if you request it, I will also ask them to submit a five to seven minute videotape presentations where they can speak to you before you, uh, you even decide to invite them for an interview. So that when you're reading their uh, applications, you have that video and you can see the person uh, talk to you and tell you why they're gonna be the best superintendent for you and why you're gonna hire them as a superintendent. It's very effective. Uh, we did that in Donna. They were on a fast track and we decided uh, let's go ahead and do that. And those uh, videotapes were really a, a gem, you know. 
So uh, it, it worked out really, really good. I'm um, not sure, Mr. De Los Santos, that I answered your question in yes, terms you of the deliverables. Uh, no, you did. You gave me some great okay. examples, sir. Uh, next question would be, well, you've answered this as well, too, because you, uh, it was going to be as far as what is, if you could describe your team makeup, but you are the team uh, with your experience and whatnot. So, um, we and are the point of contact. So you pretty much, yes, you've answered all my questions up to this time. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Gonzalez, any questions? Uh, no, sir. He's already answered mine. I appreciate your time, doctor. Okay. He didn't have any questions. Okay. Um, and I'm, I don't have any questions. You've answered all of them for me. Thank you very much for, for the presentation this evening. Thank you. All right, thank and you, and good luck in the process. Thank nice being you. Thank you. You too, sir. And the next presentation is uh, virtual, I believe. Um, Mr. Felkner and Mr. Pena, are you all online? Mr. Feltner, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you fine. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. I, hello, good evening. Um, just going to give you some uh, uh, little ground rules before we start. We're going to do a 10 minute, uh, we'll get, we're going to give you up to 10 minutes uh, for the presentation. Uh, Mr. Trevino here will give you a one uh, minute warning once your time's almost up. And you can begin when you're ready. All right. Thank you uh, for the opportunity of being here and greetings board members. I congratulate you on achieving the 100 year anniversary. My goodness, that's, that's a great milestone for you. Uh, I think you should have our presentation uh, available to you. Uh, it, there's a possibility of running that. We can, we'll move, we'll move on. Did you turn it up a little bit on that, Carlos? Mm -hmm. okay. There we go. Well, again, thank you for allowing us to be there. Um, I am Butch Feltner. I'm the director of the Executive Search Services Division for uh, Texas Association of School Boards. And uh, I was hoping that he was going to be with me tonight. I'm not sure if he is. It's Mr. Rolando Pena. He is your uh, school board. Uh, he is your TASB representative that calls on your district. He actually comes in and out of your district uh, you know, two or three times a year and visits with folks there in your district. Uh, and saying that, we're the only search firm that actually has boots on the ground that walks into every school district in the state of Texas. So uh, that's a little bit of value added difference that we have. So why would you choose uh, Executive Search Services from TASB? Well, number one, we're your school board organization. And that's all I do is uh, superintend searches. I've done this for now 14 and a half years for TASB. Uh, we've conducted in our history a little less than 800 superintendent searches for the state of Texas. More Texas public schools entrust us with their search than anyone else. So what do we do? We manage, we do the planning, we do the profiling sessions, advertise the position, the application process we work through, and that's all done electronically. We recruit candidates and contact references and handle the interview process and work th with you through the contract negotiations. Uh, we are not lawyers, but we have a legal team here at TASB, as you know, that works uh, well with us. And so we are uh, not beyond using them and their resources that they have for us. So uh, uh, moving ahead uh, with our next slide, uh, we have some process, the board prep, the profile, interview, and select uh, selection, and then a transition uh, process. And I know I don't want to just 
overkill all this. You've probably heard all these same processes throughout the evening. And so I'm kind of moving through this to get to your questions. So uh, with me is our my program coordinator, Christina McKee. She's she's the behind the scenes person that's working everything and appreciate everything that she does. Uh, the team commitments, the roles and responsibilities, involvement, the confidentiality. Uh, our candidates, we have a very strong candidate group, a pool that we that trust our service simply because they know we will respect the confidentiality. Um, the mutual respect we work with with board members. Uh, we establish a timeline that you agree to, that you you and I, we will create together. This is something we will work through. Uh, we also provide the public input. Uh, we can do this. I think you you sometimes it's called town hall meetings. Sometimes it's just called uh, community sessions. Uh, we meet with uh, anyone that you would want to in your community. In fact, if you know, we did Brownsville uh, several months ago, and we had multiple uh, community meetings there in person. Of course, this was uh, prior to COVID, uh, but we did United ISD, and I think you know where United is, and we did many of those virtually uh, because the board did not want us to come down and have in-person meetings. So we did them all virtual. So we we build the search around your desires. If you say, hey, let's do in-person, we can do that. Or if you want a, a combination of those, we can certainly handle that. Uh, so we we meet with all these folks, but as long, while all this is going on, we have a survey that's running and we attach to your district's website, both in English and Spanish. And it's running alongside of all these profiling sessions that we're conducting in your district. So what's the purpose of that? The purpose of that is building a profile of what you as a board that we will meet with and discuss what you're looking for, as well as all the communities and stakeholders in the district, what they're looking for in their new superintendent. We put all that together and then we will send you a report of everything that has been stated in that so you will have an idea of what folks in the community are saying. I know you probably know a lot of what's going on in your community, but you might be surprised at some of this. Uh, we also, the profile development will accentuate the skills and experiences that you're looking for, certifications that you're looking for, and then we can come to a clarity and consensus of what everyone's looking for in their new superintendent. And we work, and that kind of builds the process. The profile sessions, as I stated, uh, we have the, the website survey and we send you the full report. The application process, through the timeline that we develop, we will have an application deadline date. And once that application deadline date passes, we will send you electronically, each board member, all the applicants and you will see exactly what we see. And it's broken down by superintendent experience on down from deputy superintendent, assistant superintendent, right on down. But we do not extrapolate anyone from that group unless you specifically tell us to. If you tell us that we only want to see this group and above, we can do that. So again, you're in charge of the search. We also have a new video component that you will see that's embedded in our application process. So candidates, you will see the candidates answering three questions. One of the sample questions that, that is embedded in there is, why do you want to be the superintendent of Western Co. ISD? And so that way you get to see these candidates ahead of time. And as they answer these uh, three different questions about why they're wanting to come to your district. That's also inside the application. All candidates uh, will have their application. Uh, we have we the standard applications, the the uh, resume, their certifications, and their transcripts are all part of the process. As you can see there, that's some of the video interviewing that we uh, kind of a, it's an idea. Uh, you can that's part of our initial team. And then uh, that's kind of, you can see there the three videos that you would be looking at. And then the next slide will talk about the transition. 
But before we get to that point, I want to tell you about the interview process. We work through and establish uh, with you on who you want to bring in to, or you select to bring in for an interview. And we do that and we set, we establish those and you select the candidates that you want to bring in for an interview. And then we make all those arrangements. Uh, inside our information that we provide to you, we have a, a sample of 98 interview questions that covers the span of what a superintendent would, the role of the superintendent. We ask you to pick some from there or you can create your own questions. And we work through that process. We have a two-fold interview process. And the interview process is number one, it's the first round. Most districts we work with have six, bringing in for a first round and then they narrow that group down to three and they bring the group back uh, for a second round interview. And after that, then we work through that process. So that's pretty much how that works. And then we work into the uh, if the board chooses to take a site visit to the candidate's home district, uh, that would be three board members traveling to that candidate's home district. After that, you establish your uh, loan finalist, and that's when it becomes public. Then we have offer a transition session. The transition session is a to kind of clarify the roles and responsibilities of the superintendent, what your what your expectations are for the next 30, 60, 90, and perhaps for the year. And we provide that to you. Uh, our board development services conducts that for you. You might uh, heard of Kay Douglas and uh, some of those in our board development services, and they will handle that for you. Uh, and so establishes the roles and the success. And the Bernie ISD board brought that to a, su a summer leadership institute presentation and just was remarked on how great this was and the smooth transition of their superintendent. And so uh, that's pretty much what the transition, you get three hours of board training credit for the interview process and then three hours of board training for the, that if you have the transition session. We have a two year guarantee if the superintendent leaves for any reason, we will reopen the search for travel expenses only, there's no fee. And that's pretty much some of the districts that we've worked with. Uh, you can see we've spread across Texas far and wide. In fact, I'm doing a search right now. Uh, I'm, we have just started right out in little small San Isidro. And so doing that search. So obviously sir, you have be one minute. a little different. They you have one minute, sir. With your 19, almost 19,000 kids. So. Uh, our experience, we have a vast experience, a history of our success. Um, we have you know, several members of the team that work behind the scenes that you wouldn't see that will be working on your search. And we have relationships and connections, not only in state, but out of state. I'm also the past president of the National Affiliation of Superintendent Searchers. So I have colleagues across the United States. So there's not anyone in the United States that we can't recruit and reach out to. So with that, I think that pretty much sums up our presentation and I'll entertain any questions you might have. Thank you, Mr. Faulkner. We'll start the uh, questions with uh, Mr. Nyet. Uh, he responded to the questions I had. Uh, Mrs. Sustaita. Yes, thank you. All questions were answered. Thank you, Mr. Faulkner. Thank you. Mr. Trevino? Yes, sir. I have one question that I've asked everybody today, and my question is, how many additional searches will you have going on during our search time frame? I know you mentioned you already, you just started one. Yeah, San Isidro, we, we actually, we haven't even started. We, they haven't, they're going to run a spring search, and so we haven't, I've met with the board and just told them that we're going to come back and meet later to discuss their timeline and get going. Uh, we have s several, uh, I would say several, I think we have four small districts that are less than 5,000 kids. Your district would be the only district we would be working on of your size district in the entire state. So our team would be focused strictly on your search. Okay, excellent. So and if we open, if you were selected, would the price change if we extended the search nationwide? No, sir. The price is what it is. As I said, I'm the National Affiliation of Superintendent Searchers. I'm, we work out of the NSBA, National School Board Association. 
And so your search is automatically picked up by our sister organizations around the United States. So if I'm in Illinois or Iowa or California or Oregon, I can find your search and uh, apply. Okay. So there's no additional charge for that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mr. De Los Santos? Um, all my questions were answered. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Gonzalez? No, I have none. Thank you. Appreciate it. And Mr. Feltner, I have none either. You've answered all, all my questions. And uh, thank you very much uh, for the presentation this evening. Thank you very much. And you'll have a pleasant evening. And good luck to you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We do not. Hello, good evening. We're going good to evening, give you uh, 10 minutes for the presentation. Yes, sir. And then we'll open it up for questions, okay? Very good. Thank and, you. And we'll start whenever you're you're ready. Okay. Thank you so much. Well, we'll start right away. Thank we know you. it's been a long night already. So uh, thank you so much. My name is Leandra Ortiz. Uh, Ms. Uh, Paige Kyle is here as well as thank our uh, education consultant, Gary Patterson, is thank dialing in through the Zoom. I just wanted to take a moment uh, to tell you how uh, pleased we are to be presenting to you this evening. We are, um, uh, we have been working with the district since 2005 and we are very happy uh, to have that working relationship with the district. Um, and very pleased tonight to go ahead and give you uh, our presentation as to the superintendent search and our qualifications. Uh, one of the things that I do want to point out is if you have our packet, if you'll look at page five of 13 of our packet, um, we are uh, making a change there that we, we should have made before, but just letting you know, above the district uh, expense charges tab, there's a sentence that says the district will only be charged for the attorney to travel from our law firm San Antonio office. Uh, that is actually should say Harlingen office. Uh, because we do have a local office. We are here local for you, uh, and there won't be any charges outside of um, you know, our travel time from Harlingen to here, which is just a few minutes away, and so we are easily accessible to you at any time. Um, the other thing is uh, that we're just, we're very pleased, you know, Walsh Gallegos has been working with you guys for a long time. Uh, I'm very happy to uh, to present uh, Ms. Paige Kyle, who's one of uh, my partners in the law firm, uh, and she will be giving you a lot more specifics as to the superintendent search. But the contacts you can always reach is myself and Ms. Kyle, should you need anything. Uh, so at this time, I'm going to go ahead and hand that over to Ms. Kyle. Appreciate you hanging in there with us. I know it's been a long day for you guys already. Mr. Patterson's on, on the screen, and I'm going to reserve a little bit of time for him, too, because we really want you to meet him. Um, our search consultants are really an important part of our search, and so I, I'm anxious for you to meet Gary. But I think um, what 
what sometimes districts ask is how we're different from other search firms. And I think how we are different is because we've represented school districts uh, really since the firm began in 1983, we know your business and, and, and what you need in a superintendent. And we know that every community is different. And so what we do is have an entirely board driven search. We're gonna help you all along the way and we're gonna give you uh, recommendations and advice about things you may want to consider. But we think you elected officials are in the best position to tell us what's gonna work best. Like in, in Westlaco, what's gonna be best for what type of community input we want to get? Do we wanna do online surveys? Do we wanna do town hall meetings? We will design that process with you all as a board. And so that's one way we're different from other firms is we're not gonna tell you how this works. You're gonna tell us. And it, you noticed in our packet, we, we included a sample timeline that's literally just a sample because you're gonna you're gonna design that also. We brought another one just because uh, of tonight's board meeting date. We were able to fill in uh, on the left hand side of the packet that I handed you when I got here. There's another timeline, just a sample that you could look at to see if you were ready to start right away. Just how quickly you could have your new superintendent in Westlaco, and you you see we we presented an option that could if it was the board's desire, have your new superintendent before the holidays, if that's something that the board would like. And so the other way we're different, uh, and we hear this from our clients um, who work with other, other search firms, we don't have a stable of superintendents that we're trying to find jobs for. In fact, for a long time, I've done about 30 of these with the firm, for a long time, I hadn't even met the person that a particular board hired. And so that's pretty good evidence we don't have a stable that we're trying to find jobs for. Our law firm also does not accept any fees from potential applicants. There are search firms that not only work with boards, but also work with applicants and, and uh, accept fees from them. And, and we believe that should be handled separately. And so that's something that our firm doesn't do. The other thing that's different about our firm from what we hear from our clients is the, I call it extreme vetting that we do. The vetting and screening that we do of your, your favored applicants. Um, our goal is when you name your finalist, you know how you have to name a finalist 21 days before the final hiring? Our goal is when you name your finalist, you're not gonna have any surprises. There's not gonna be anything out there that someone in your community looks up on the internet or on social media and tells you about that you haven't already heard. And that's one of the ways that our consultants really help us out. Because our law firm represents about 500 school districts in the state of Texas, there's a chance that some of your applicants, we may know something about them from our representation of another school district. And because of our attorney-client privilege, just like we have with you all, we may not be able to share information that you need to know about those applicants. And so that's why we use the search consultant. And we use all retired superintendents to serve in that role. Um, and, and I think we got the best of the best. And Mr. Patterson, who I'm gonna let talk to you in a little bit, um, has been a superintendent for over 21 years and he's been doing searches with us probably five years. Uh, he'll, he'll give you more of those details. And the other thing about the search consultants that we use is we make sure they're well connected in the state because you're gonna have applicants from all across the state of Texas and probably outside of Texas. And they have, these consultants have people they can pick up the phone and call and say, I need the scoop on this person. We don't just check the references that they provide, we go off script and we tell them, the applicants know this. And uh, Gary does a really, really good job about that. The other thing we do besides his vetting is we have a third party vendor that actually our law firm uses too, called American Data Bank. And they can do some additional background checking if the board would like. Um, some of our clients like to have credit history pulled on applicants because obviously they're managing a very large budget. Or, um, a more detailed criminal history than, than you would run in the school district. And sometimes, and you've probably read these stories, we have clients that want us to make sure they have a doctorate. If they say they're a doctor, 
that you make sure that they have a legitimate doctorate and this American Data Bank checks that for us. They verify the degrees if the board wants that service. And it's very inexpensive, I think surprisingly inexpensive. They have um, just a, a list of the things that they can do and it's in the, on the left hand side of your packet that I brought with me tonight is a memo from that American Data Bank and the very last page is kind of a menu pricing about what kind of background checks they can do. And so that's another way that we, our goal is to make sure you don't have surprises when you name your finalists. You know what, what your community will know. The other thing that I think sets us apart from other search firms, and, and I would recommend that you consider this, whichever firm you use. Um, a lot of search firms will tell you that that 21 day waiting period is a good time to negotiate the contract. And we don't think that's the, the time to negotiate the contract. We really recommend that the board, rather than the applicant, present the contract that you all want to offer to your superintendent. And how we do that is we would bring a model, and the TASB model is an excellent model to start with. We would bring it to the board for your approval before you ever even have your first round interviews. And then after you decide who you're bringing back second round, once you have the contract in the form that you want, it's not got any of the blanks filled in, you know, the dollars and cents are not filled in, but the actual form of the contract, then we send it out on your behalf to the people that you're going to interview second round and ask them to reply to us if they have any concerns about the form of the contract. Because there, is, uh, there are some contracts out there that are not in our opinion, favorable to the school district. Um, they, are, they are drafted by the superintendent's council and they're doing their job. They're, they're recommending a contract that's most favorable to the superintendent. And of course, we represent you guys. And so we think it's best to keep it where you, we are telling the, the applicants what the Westlaco board will be offering. And then they have to let us know if they have any problems with it. We think it's really good to have a meeting of the minds before you name your finalist. Not only on the form of the contract, but that night, before you name them, what salary you'll agree to, any other terms that are special, so that the 21 days can just be a celebration at that point. And so that's the other thing that we help, uh, that I think we're different in, in helping with the legal side, the legal pieces. The other thing, I, I, I know it's late, but sometimes we have school boards that are rearing to go and ready to get started. Um, you have one it's, minute. Pardon? You have one minute. Okay. Leandra and I came tonight ready to go. If you're ready to uh, get started tonight, we need about 30 minutes of your time. And I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Patterson. Sorry, Gary. Didn't leave you much time. You're on mute. You're on mute, Gary. You're on mute still. Text him, sorry. Even one minute. He has a lot down, so. Oh, he has a lot down. Perhaps did the, did the technology mute him? Yeah. And so they need to unmute uh, him? Yeah. Oh, there he goes. There can you hear me? There you go, Gary. Now we can. Uh, uh, thanks, Paige. I know I've got a short minute, <laughs> and uh, but just want to thank you for the opportunity to be here. Uh, uh, in in a minute, I don't have time to go through the entire process. Paige did a good job. I know there's similar. Uh, you've you've interviewed many uh, uh, firms tonight, and we all have some similar services. Just want to stress to you that we try to be different by building a personal relationship with the Board of Trustees and with the applicants. So we can we can make a fit, uh, not just bring you a, a slate of people, but you have unique, uh, all, all school districts have similar issues, but Westlaco has unique issues. So what are those unique things that you want to look at? And we'll focus in on that, build a relationship with you and try to find the best personality the best qualified person uh, for success. And so I'll stop there because I want to be mindful of your time and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you. I'll go ahead and open it up for questions. Uh, Mr. Nieto? Actually, they answered my uh, question, board-driven search. So thank you for that. 
Uh, Mrs. Sustaita? No, no questions. You answered them all plus more, so thank you. <laughs> uh, I have one question, and it is how many additional searches will you have going on during our search time frame if you were selected? As a, right as a now, company? we just finished one they, uh, in Decatur. They just named a finalist, and we have one ongoing, but they are about to start their interviews, and that's El Paso ISD. And so they're going to be ahead. They're not going to be running exactly at the same time as you, a different part of the state. But um, Mr. Patterson will only have one at a time, usually, um, that is running at, uh, because his, his time is very intensive during the search. Yeah, and, and I'll just echo that, sir, that uh, I would be working with no one else but you during okay. this time. Thank you, sir. And I have one more question. And without giving out the dollar amount figure that, that was presented here, but I have a question on page 4 of 13. Mm -hmm. The education consultant, mm -hmm. there's a fee listed there, and then there's a fee listed down at the bottom. So is that in addition. two separate fees in addition? It's in addition. And okay. the fee for the law firm is actually under your retainer program with, with our law firm. And so it's billed by the six minutes, by the tenth of an hour, just for as you use us. Okay. And so that's why we don't have a real fixed fee because it really depends on how how much you rely on the firm during this time. Okay. But I put a ballpark in there just so you can you can plan because that is in addition to the the flat rate from the consultant. His okay. fee is most closely comparable to other search firms because he's the one that's doing the consulting, interacting with the applicants. We're doing the legal pieces as as we normally would under your retainer program. Okay. Yeah. And Last question I asked everyone was, will the price change if we extend the search nationwide? The only thing that would change about that is if you wanted us to advertise in national outlets, it would only be the cost of that advertising. Not from our standpoint, but just the cost of the advertising. But one thing we've, we've been pleasantly surprised about is people over this, all over this country know if they want a superintendent job in Texas, where to look. And okay. so we always advertise in Texas ISD and on Tassinet, and almost every search we get applicants from out of state. But we can certainly um, advertise your search in other outlets if you'd like, and that's the only extra cost that it would be. Right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Mr. De Los Santos? Um, all my questions were answered, the questions that I asked all the other uh, firms. Okay. Okay, so thank very you very good. much. And uh, Mr. Gonzalez, he's online, so let's see if he has a question. Mine have been answered. Thank you, ladies. Appreciate it, Mr. Anderson. Thank you, and y'all have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. We appreciate the opportunity to present, and uh, we, since we're already here, we'll just stay and stand by. And in case you do feel like you want to get started this evening, although I know it's late, um, we're we're we'd be ready to go. So. Thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you so you. much. Thank we'll you so much for presenting. Yeah. Thank, 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 thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, that was the last of our presentations. I'll move on to yeah. item five, adjournment. I'll move. Uh, adjournment was at 9.45 p.m. And then we'll come back and... I'm Dr. Jaime Rodriguez, Vice President of the Wessico ISD Board of Trustees. This special board meeting 
is being conducted in compliance with the Texas Open Meetings Act. Notice of this meeting has been posted online for at least 72 hours. The board is meeting by the use of Google Meets and telephone transmission, which allows two-way communication for members of the public during public comments. A recording of this meeting is being made and will be available to the public at a later date. The time is now 9.47 p.m. and I call this meeting to order. I will now begin the roll call. Mr. Nieto? Present. Mrs. Sustaita? Present. Mr. Trevino? Present. Mr. De Los Santos? Present. And Mr. Gonzalez? Present. Uh, let the record show that a quorum of board members are in attendance. And I will move on to item three, public comments. There are none. There are none. I'd like to make a motion to modify the agenda and move the executive session uh, above item four. I have a motion by Mr. De Los Santos to change the order of the agenda. Move close meeting uh, and above item four. Do I have a second? Second. And a second by Mr. Nieto. Any discussion? We'll go ahead and take it to a vote. Mr. Nieto? Aye. Mr. Sustaita? Aye. Mr. Trevino? Aye. Mr. De Los Santos? Aye. Mr. Gonzalez? Aye. Motion passes. We'll move on to item five, closed meeting to discuss A, personnel matters, Texas Government Code 551.074. One, employment of personnel, certified professional and non-contractual personnel. Two, resignations. Three, deliberation regarding the appointment, employment, evaluation, reassignment, duties, discipline, or dismissal of a public officer or employee, Texas Government Code 551.074 and 551.071. B, consultation with attorney regarding a pending or contemplated litigation, settlement, a settlement offer, or a matter in which the duty of the attorney to the West ISD under the Texas disciplinary rules of professional conduct of the State Bar of Texas clearly conflicts with Chapter 551 of the Texas Government Code, Texas Government Code 551.071. And it is now 9.49, and we'll go into closed session.
Is on. He's visible. Okay. You ready? Ready. Okay. It is now 10:20 p.m. And uh, we'll go. We'll move on to item six. Re reconvene an open meeting. A possible action if necessary on items discussed in closed meeting. Uh, A1, discussion and possible action on new employment certified professional and non-contractual personnel. Dr. Valdez? Recommendation is for approval as discussed in closed session, pending compensation review of one employee as discussed in executive session. So move. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Nieto and a second by Mr. De Los Santos. Any discussion? We'll take it to a vote. Mr. Nieto? Aye. Mr. Sustaita? Aye. Mr. Trevino? Aye. Mr. De Los Santos? Aye. And Mr. Gonzalez? Aye. Motion passes. Item two, discussion and possible action on resignations. This is no action. No action. We have no resignations. Okay. So we'll, move, we'll come back to item four on the agenda, discussion and possible action for the board to consider the selection of a superintendent search firm RFQ number 22-10-05. Make a motion to accept uh, JG. Second. Consulting. I have a motion by Mr. Trevino to select JG, con JG Consulting and a second by Mr. De Los Santos. Any discussion? We'll take it to a vote. No, they, they were all, we just, we thank everybody, all the search firms that came out today and presented. They were all very, very, you know, good at, at what they do. But uh, it was a tough choice, and, and we decided to go with uh, JG. Uh, we'll take it to a vote. Mr. Nieto? Aye. Mrs. Sustaita? Aye. Mr. Trevino? Aye. Mr. De Los Santos? Aye. Mr. Gonzalez? And motion passes. And we'll move on to item seven, adjournment. And it is 10.22 p.m.